I am so fortunate to have such great sponsors on this channel. Our sponsors, as well as our patrons, are the people who keep the lights on here at Esoteric Atlanta so I can continue delivering videos to you multiple times a week. I am so lucky to be a part of Gnostic TV, to have a SIA as a sponsorship, and to now be sponsored by the incredible Spooky2 company. Spooky2 is like a rife machine generator to help you in your journey through this human experience. If you want more information on Spooky2 and what it can do for you, there will be a video down in the description box. If you would like to purchase Spooky2, there are a few different discounts count codes that you can do, all of which you can, again, find down in the description box below. For the 11 year anniversary of Spooky 2, for particular products that are listed for the anniversary sale, you can get 9% off of these said products by entering Happy Bryce in checkout. For all additional products, the regular products, you can get 5% off by entering Bryce Watson when you check out. Here is a little clip of what Spooky 2 can do for you. Hi, John, Echo, and the Spooky 2 team. This is Kanika here, and I'm here to share not just my and my partner's Spooky 2 journey. Spooky 2 has been superbly special for my partner and I. I'm actually sitting in the scalar field. In our personal experiences, my partner and I have uh, literally gone off all our, our vitamin and multivitamin multivitamin and mineral supplements. We hardly take them. We used to take them to support and supplement our well-being. But I've been using the daily wellness protocol and my hair has just exploded in its growth. The skin's gotten uh, beautiful. The DH experimental frequencies, I've been experimenting with a lot of them. We have such good strength in our body. We don't fall ill to an extent that my partner has hay fever. Peter, he has hay fever, but this time, I've started using the Immune Super Booster and oh my god, it is magic. Uh, we recently this year purchased the remotes as well. So we use our DNA clipping and we put our clippings in it and uh, it's just been so beautiful and profound and I have always been, so I pray daily, I meditate daily and I've been sitting in the scale of feel and meditating and praying and my psychic abilities, my connection to the divine, if I just want to put it in a nutshell, is just increasingly becoming so potent. I've been using the 12 strand DNA activation as well in the DH experimental frequencies just to see how it goes. And the, the effects are so magnificent in our, on our physical bodies and our like um, energetic field. I'm an energy healer. I take clients through um, quantum healing sessions while sitting in the field so that they can also, I can be a clearer conduit and send these energies as well by pure quantum entanglement, right? And if people were to not believe this, all this physical proof shows what a gem of a product this is. I can't like recommend this more to anybody like so yes much love and gratitude thank you for listening and uh, i could share so much more but i'd like to wrap this up now thank you Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix 
for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and we've been doing these a lot lately, but I'm hoping today that you and I, as friends, can just have a heart-to-heart. -heart. On Thursday, you guys know that Catherine Edwards and I always film a coffee chat. We do it every other week on our channels. We, we do bi-weekly. And the coffee chats are not supposed to be anything like deep dives. It's it's really just supposed to be us talking about stuff and like speculating, you know, all different topics. Like we're literally sitting at a coffee house with you guys and just kind of as friends, just like discussing life and interesting things. We've always made it clear that for most of these conversations, we're just speculating and giving our opinions. And I do understand that most people do get that. However, this past Thursday, I was absolutely and still am absolutely horrified by what was going on in the comment section to the point where I all day yesterday, like I did a show on um, the Love, Chan Love Channel on Telegram. If you guys missed that, we spoke a little bit about it. But most of yesterday, I was just in a, like my mind was in a tailspin because I could not believe what I was actually seeing in the comment section. And so I wanted to have a heart to heart with you guys today because what I saw in the com comment section was so unbelievably scary and unbelievably appalling. And it was a sign of history repeating itself. I never realized, now I, I, I have been very clear in the last couple of years that I have been very concerned with the truther community, that there are a lot of red flags for culty um, tactics, but yesterday like went crossed a boundary. And I didn't realize, I, I mean, I guess if I had thought about it, I would have realized this is where it was heading. But it just seems that now in the truther community, just like in the normie world, there is an official narrative. For any story that happens in our world, the truther community comes up with an official narrative. And if you question that narrative, or if you look at other perspectives of the narrative, you are then violently attacked. Just like they do in communism, just like they do in tyrannical situations. And so it became abundantly clear to me yesterday that the truther community the greater whole generally speaking has turned into a tyrannical thought police organization uh, one comment in particular uh, was addressed to me telling me that i needed to help catherine snap out of it because she had a different opinion over a situation than most people in this community have and i was absolutely horrified by that comment horrified i want to make something very very clear I have opinions on things that I express here on my channel. As far as spirituality is concerned, I'm 18 years in when it comes to studying under lineages of spirituality. I'm 18 years in. I, my opinions, therefore, are based on my own experiences and my own studies. With that being said, I am also a huge supporter of free thought. I'm a huge supporter of every person being able to have their own autonomy. Not once will I ever, ever hear what I'm saying, ever be part of the thought police. I read 1984 when I was a kid. I don't want to be a part of an Orwellian society, which the truther community, unfortunately, is turning into an Orwellian society. I was absolutely gobsmacked that this person was trying to get me to cohorse my friend, sorry, I'm shaking right now, my friend into having the same opinion as the commenter. 
what the actual part of being a truther, part of being awake, part of having sovereignty is to question everything, to research everything. How many people turned Anderson Cooper off and turned on YouTube? How many people are just parroting what YouTubers say without researching it? And then get upset when somebody comes along with a slightly different opinion. My boyfriend said something pretty profound yesterday because he was also appalled by what was happening in the comment section. The truth can stand up to scrutiny. The truth will never change. No matter what you throw at it, no matter how violent you react to it, the truth will never change. It, the truth can be questioned. A lie cannot. A lie cannot be questioned because the lie will fall apart. So let me ask you a very honest question, some self-reflection. Are you triggered by people who question the official truth or narrative because you know deep down that it's a lie? And by somebody like Catherine and me just questioning and looking at different perspectives, the lie that you have clung to has fallen apart. Is that why you're triggered? Because if so, then honor the trigger and look into it. So basically, and I will pin that video down in the description box below. As you guys know, I follow the Cassiopeians. I learned about the Cassiopeians from my boyfriend a long time ago. He's been following them for a very, very long time. And he, like myself, is very skeptical of most channelers. Most channelings, very skeptical of. And I have my reasons for that, which we can get into that. The Cassiopeians, on the other hand, because of who they are and because of all the information out there on them, and because they are literally have gotten nothing wrong in 30 years, I do listen to what they have to say. I take in what they have to say. It doesn't mean I hold on to it like it's the ultimate truth, but I do respect what they say. I also respect the person who is channeling the Cassiopeians. And this is a woman by the name of Laura Knight, who actually is my boyfriend's third cousin, which I've spoken about. He's been following her work for a long time and only recently learned that they're actually their cousins and they have been in, in, in communication. I have a lot of Laura Knight's books, like this one, for example, example, huge book. She's super intelligent. She's an incredible researcher. I reference her stuff a lot when I'm doing deep dives, especially into religion and the history of religion. Now, Laura Knight herself, she's an older lady. She has been working on herself and in this area of self-study for most of her life. She's not a newcomer. In fact, what's shocking to me about the reaction people had to the Cassiopeians yesterday and shows me that none of you guys are doing your research like you're supposed to as an enlightened person, the Cassiopeians have been around longer than some of the viewers here have even been alive. The Cassiopeians and Laura Knight were the original truthers. Half of this stuff that you know in this conspiracy world, you know because of Laura Knight and the Cassiopeians. But you didn't know that, did you? Because you didn't even take a second Take just a second to look at who the Cassiopeians were and look at their backstory and look at Laura Knight. Instead, you went on to attack. Not even realizing being so, as, as Catherine said a couple weeks ago, being so arrogant that you've become ignorant. Not even realizing that most of the stuff you know about the greater world around you is because of the Cassiopeians and Laura Knight. How embarrassing is that? How embarrassing is that? You would have known that if you had actually paused for a second and gone and looked this stuff up. 
In fact, we were laughing this morning. There's another woman on the YouTube named Carrie Cassidy. And I really like Carrie Cassidy. I like her stuff, although she scares me because she's very intimidating in the way that she interviews. And many, many years ago, Carrie Cassidy actually interviewed Laura Knight. So a lot of these older YouTubers, older it's as in they've been around for a while in this truth of the world, a lot of people like Carrie Cassidy, the ones who've been around for a while, do know who Laura, they know exactly who Laura Knight is and who the Cassiopeians are because my friends, they were here first. Laura Knight and the Cassiopeians were in this community long before you even knew this community existed. And she interviewed Laura Knight. And it is the one interview where Laura Knight actually ate Carrie Cassidy up. In fact, we tried looking for that interview and it's you can't find it anymore. And we we if if anybody can find it, please let me know. But I'm speculating that maybe Carrie Cassidy even took it down because Laura Knight was on it. Like she knew what she was talking about. She had her research. She had her answers. She knew what she was talking about. And if you guys even ever cared to look at the Cassiopeian board or read writing the wave series by Laura Knight, you would actually see that Laura Knight is constantly questioning the, the Cassiopeians. In sessions, she's constantly double checking. Are you sure? That sounds weird. Are you sure? Bet you didn't know that either, did you? Which you would know, but instead of actually doing your research, you cast judgment because you got triggered. Because the official narrative you've been programmed to believe was challenged. Which all we want, from my opinion, from my understanding of being a seeker, being in the disclosure world, is always challenging the official narrative. Always challenging your own opinions. I am still, I just, I was depressed yesterday because of it. I was like, I cannot believe, I'm terrified now for the future we're walking into. Because honestly, the Orwellian attitude that is coming from the truther community is scarier than the controllers that we have right now. There are some people in the truther community that are way more violent, way more aggressive than the controllers. And this also proves another point I've been saying all along. If you study the law of one, you will know that being aware of what's really going on in the world does not mean that you're going to ascend. The matrix that we live in in third density are the laws of third density. They're not the laws of fourth density. So knowing the laws of third density or knowing what's going on in third density doesn't mean that you're going to ascend. And in fact, looking at some of the way people were speaking, especially to Catherine in those comment sections, I don't think y'all are going anywhere. Where's your humanity? Because if you know all these things about the greater world around you, but you have no humanity in you, what makes you think you're going to ascend? Because it doesn't matter what you know. What matters is your character, your integrity, the way that you treat other people. Do you respect other people's autonomy? Do you respect other human beings, even if they have a different opinion than you? Because if you can't find that within yourself, then you're not going anywhere. You really think you can speak to people the way that some people were speaking to myself and Catherine in that comment section yesterday and go to fourth density positive? You think you that's going to get you there? To go to fourth density positive, you have to be 51% service to others. What does that mean? How you treat other people. The choices that you make for yourself. How you take care of yourself. How you take care of your loved ones. The boundaries, the respect that you have for others. My Another point, it doesn't matter what you know. There are so many people in this world right now that don't even know about the law of one, but they're going to be ascending to fourth density positive because it doesn't matter that they don't know the law of one. What matters is the actions that they're taking. What matters is that they love their fellow humans. What matters is the way that they feel empathy and compassion for people, for animals, for those less fortunate for them. What matters is the way that they respect their own boundaries and the boundaries of others. That's what matters. What matters is, do you feel pain in your heart when you see a homeless person on the side of the road? Do you feel empathy for somebody when you see that there is suffering? Do you respect people enough to not try to bully them? 
Do you respect people enough to let them live their experiences? Because if you're trying to control people, if you're trying to control their thoughts and control your opi their opinions, that's service to self. That's your selfishness. That's making it all about you, not about others, not about an equal playing field for everyone. So if you're idiotic enough to think that just knowing about the world around you ensures your ascension, then I don't know what to tell you. You miss the mark. You miss the point. I, I did a live show on the Love Channel yesterday, and someone came in and asked about, like, are we gotten to the topic about, you know, sending love and light to, to people in, the, in public? And I said, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Let's talk about that for a second. Let's look at that from a very um, logical perspective. Right now, there are people in our lives, all of our lives, normies out there, who have gotten the, the special lightsaber, the zapperty doo -dah. We don't. I don't want that. I do not consent to that. That's my choice for my body. I don't want it. And I don't want somebody forcing me to get it. Because this is my body. I'm sure you watching feel the same way or you wouldn't be on this channel. However, however, you cannot be a hypocrite. You cannot say, I don't consent to your form of treatment, but yet force your own personal form of treatment on somebody else. Sending them light and love. That's healing. They didn't consent to that. So you can't go around and say, don't, I, it's my body, my choice, but then yet not respect other people's bodies and their choice. That's, a hypo that's hypocritical. You have to, you have to respect other people's autonomy. You have to. How dare you think that you know better than someone else? How dare you be that selfish, that egocentric, to think that you know better than somebody else and their own body. Their density is the density of choice. We've talked about that a lot. This is the only density where there is a veil, where there is a quantum, where there is an astral why? Because when we come into third density, because it's the density of choice, we can't, there are certain things we can't know because we need free will. We can't come into life knowing about the laws of the universe, of spirituality. We have to discover that on our own. We have to discover that, come through that in the amnesia on our own without any help. That's because of choice, and that's because with this density of choice, there's polarity. There's dark and there's light, service to self, service to others. And because there's polarity, there's opposing forces. Because there's opposing forces, forces, there's friction, suffering, whatever you want to call it, the human condition. That's the point of third density. I've used this metaphor a lot. A match has everything in it that it needs to light itself, but it cannot light itself unless it's struck up against the matchbook. It needs the friction for the light to break through it. The heart needs to break so the light can shine through. This is true for every person with a soul on this planet. So with that being said, you have to respect other people's autonomy. When a person decides, a soul decides to incarnate on this planet, they have a soul contract. They have agreed to go through amnesia and then through that amnesia, go through friction and suffering. Because only by that friction can, and suffering can we get uncomfortable enough to start to seek change. Now, if you were to try to interfere with that, and try to send light to people without them going through the suffering they need to go through, then you've totally just interfered with their, you've taken their autonomy away from them. You've taken, you, 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 you're selfish. You took their experience away from them. You stole it from them. You can't do that. That's not of the light. That's of the dark. Ceiling is of the dark. 
Now, if someone comes to you, if you're a healer and someone comes to you and they say, I need help, then you can help them. Then you can do whatever it is in agreement with them that you can do to help them on their path. But they have to come to you. They have to get to that point where they're willing to start to course correct. And you know what, my friends, sometimes when they come to that realization that they need to course correct, they won't go to you. They'll go to someone else. There's so many paths to God. I take the Ashtanga path, the Ashtanga lineage. There's Tai Chi. There's Reiki. There's all these different, there's long distance running. There's all these different paths that you can take that's going to take you to the same light. And you cannot force somebody to be on the path that you're on. You have to let them pick their path. Even if you think that path's not going to be right for them, you have to allow them to have that experience because you don't know what their soul contract is. And how dare you think that you know better than them or God about their own life? This person came on and said that love has no boundaries. Absolutely not. Love is nothing but boundaries. Love without boundaries is selfishness. Love without boundaries is narcissism. Because I love my boyfriend, I'm not going to cheat on him. And I've had plenty of chances, especially on YouTube, but I, that's a boundary. That's a boundary. Because I love him. I would never do anything to hurt him. Because I love my students, I let them come to me when they have a question. I teach them in class, but I let them come to me. Because I respect people on the street I'm not going to run around throwing light at them. I'm going to leave them alone. I'm going to leave them to their privacy. I'm going to leave them to their autonomy. And if that's something you can't understand, then I, again, I don't know what to tell you. I also want to make it very clear, and this is why it's really important to research the laws of spirituality, the foundational laws. Beings of light, the positive polarity, the service to others polarity that are higher than us, like fourth, fifth, sixth density. Because they are service to others, they respect us. They respect our autonomy. They respect our journey. So they don't interfere. They don't interfere. No extraterrestrial that is of the light is ever going to show up in your life. But you know who does show up in your life? The ones of the dark. Because they're all about stealing and interfering and derailing. And they can make it look like they're of the light. They can fake it. They can pretend for their own selfish needs. You see, again, we're on a journey on this earth. Our soul is here to refine itself. And in our mind, in our ego, we want to live a life of just pure bliss. We want to be in, at recess all the time. But the soul knows that that's not, that's not, there's no worth there. And I'm going to explain it to you guys this way. I posted this morning about like, if you want to, if you lose faith in humanity, go watch a road race, or there's a video on my Instagram. And it's true because you see the best of humanity at the end of a road race, people helping each other, cheering each other on. I used to be a long distance runner. And God knows I've busted my ass in Ashtanga Yoga in India, broken bones, literally, literally sweat, blood, and tears in my physical body. But let's, let's, let's put life in the metaphor of a marathon. Let's say that you decide that you want to challenge yourself because you know this is going to be a hard task, that you want to grow as a soul and you, you want to take these challenges on and you want to see what, you, what you're made of, what's really inside of you. And so you train for a marathon. Most marathon runners, besides the professional runners, that's why they do it, because they want to see what they're made of. You spend all these months training, training, training. Your feet are covered in blisters and blood. You've got a sore knee. <laughs> you literally had to run through the rain and the snow, and, but you're ready. And that day comes for the marathon. 
before the marathon, you had to even apply for a number. If you don't know anything about road races, they're so popular nowadays that for these big road races, you don't even know if you're going to get a number. So you do all this training in the hopes that you submit your application and it's like a lottery that you actually get a number and you can actually run. But you, you finally, you won the lottery. You got your opportunity. You've trained all this. You spent all these months training, all these months training. And you finally won the lottery to run that New York marathon or that Boston marathon or the Atlanta marathon. And you, you get your outfit and you find the best outfit you can wear for this long journey you're about to go on. You've really researched what shorts to wear. And for women, like what sports bra is not going to chafe you. For men, what shirt's not going to chafe you. You've got your fanny pack on you with like some Neosporin in case you need it. You've got your cell phone attached to it in case there's an emergency. You looked at the map of the, the 26. 6.2 miles you're prepared you get to that start line you've got your number on you're here you're ready to be born into this marathon the buzzer goes off you start you're running with these herds of people coming into this this adventure your butterflies your adrenaline you're scared but you're excited at the same time and you start and you're going through this experience and it's a long experience, it's 26.2 miles. You're kind of running with the same people and then some people will push ahead, some people will fall back. You get to get to kind of know people who are around you, who are experiencing this same simulation of a marathon with you. And you're getting close and you get to that 25th mile. You're covered in sweat, you're covered in soot. Maybe you've got some blood coming out of your shoe, you're in pain. You're ready to be done, but you've got one mile left, one mile. And when you get to that finish line and you cross through that finish line, regardless of all the pain that you're in, of your body breaking, you know once you cross that finish line that you prove to yourself that you are stronger and more capable than you ever thought you were. And you've refined your soul because now you have wisdom. Now you have experience. All that friction, that pain taught you something. It gave you, it gave you focus. It gave you purpose. But you get to that 25th mile and you're so excited, even though you're in pain, because you're about to just prove to yourself how badass you are. And then all of a sudden, you feel these hands on your shoulders picking you up. What's happening? You're being picked up. And all, all of a sudden, you're being dropped at the finish line. And you sit there stunned that you were just dropped at the finish line. And you look up and it's an alien smiling saying, don't worry, I just finished it for you so you didn't have to suffer, but you're pissed. You're not gonna get that back. Through all the pain and suffering you were in, that last mile was what finished it for you. You didn't get to finish. All that stuff you trained for, you didn't get to finish. It got interrupted. Somebody else took it upon themselves to do it for you. But that's not why you trained. That's exactly the same thing as if an, a good alien were to come to Earth and give you the answers. You trained for this life. You came here prepared for this life. You got your lottery number. You're at the 25th mile. You need to finish this life. And the good aliens, the good extraterrestrials know that. And they want you to have that. They want you to have that victory. They want you to have that accomplishment. They've already done it themselves many times. Now it's your turn. They don't interfere because they respect you. They respect your soul. And they know you can do it. The bad extraterrestrials, on the other hand, don't respect you at all. So with that being said, for me personally, Anybody that's claiming to be in communication with the galactics, huge red flag, huge. Because I know through my studying of the foundational spiritual laws that they're not talking to good extraterrestrials. Because no good extraterrestrials would interfere. They're talking to service to self, fourth density negative entities who are trying to derail everyone and pick them up at that 25th mile. So they can't cross that finish line. Because the service to self entities can't create their own life force. They have to feed off of you. So they have to derail you. You're their prey. They're the hunters. You are the prey. And they set up these traps. They're brilliant. 
Can't take that away from them. They're evil, but they're brilliant. They set these traps up that entice the ego because the ego is the false sense of self. They start appearing to naive people who don't understand they're being manipulated. And these people build these big platforms and they tell you stuff that's not true, but that sounds good to you, like things you want to hear so that you won't actually stay on the marathon. You know, it's, it's, um, there's such thing as the initiates path. And we're going to do a deeper video with Catherine and Tamara about this, but nobody is a self-taught channeler. Nobody. We come through the veil of amnesia. We have to go back to lineages. We have to go, we have to have teachers. Without a teacher, you're going to fall into your blind spots. Without a teacher, you're going to get sucked into your imagination. And it takes years, years. If you actually study Laura Knight and her story and see how many years it took her to get to the place where she was to channel, to be an adept and to channel the Cassiopeians, she didn't just channel them overnight. It took years, decades. I didn't become an authorized teacher overnight. It took years. I've, I've talked to you guys about this before. Teacher trainings, they're scams. No one becomes a yoga teacher in 200 hours. That's ridiculous. That's laughable. That's a scam. It's the easy way out, but it works because it's playing with your ego. It's blowing the ego up. And so how do we, how do we fix this? How do we course correct this? My advice, figure out who you are. Because I think a lot of these people who are turning into tyrants, who are turning Orwellian in the truther community, in my personal opinion, it's because they lack a sense of self. They've identified themselves with the label of truther. It's not who you are. So I ask you, if, if you want to do an exercise, these are exercises I've done with myself many times. Take away the label of truther. Who are you? Take away the label of YouTuber or yoga teacher or lawyer or accountant or whatever you do for a living. Take that label away. Take that job away from you. Who are you? Take away the label of mother, father, husband, wife, sister, brother, friend, granddaughter. Take all those labels away. Who are you? Take away the label of your name. Take away the label of whatever school you graduated from. Who are you? Who are you without all these things that you think make you you? Because all these things that you think make you you, they're just part of this experience. They're part of the ride. They're part of the marathon. They're not the soul running the marathon. Who is the soul running the marathon? The soul running the marathon doesn't have a label. So what is that? What is that essence? If what I'm saying scares you, because the first time I ever did this exercise, I was in Philadelphia. This was over 10 years ago. It freaked me out because I never thought about that before. I was raised to believe that I am Bryce and that all my accomplishments are who I am. And even though I'm proud of my accomplishments, they're not who I am. They're part of this experience. I'm so proud of the fact that I am the only female authorized teacher in the state of Georgia. I worked really hard for that. But I worked really hard for that in this life. It's part of this experience, part of this marathon. It's not actually my soul. So what is my soul? If that scares you, if that makes you panic a little bit, good. Good, lean into that. Lean into that. That means that if you're triggered, if there's a panic there, that means that you're in the right starting place. Because now you know, now there's an aha moment, there's a prativa, right? If that panic, that trigger, that's that prativa, prativa is Sanskrit, it's a flash of illumination. Oh, I see. Oh my gosh. I see. I'm not, I'm not a five foot five, 110 pound, blonde haired, blue eyed, 41 year old woman in Atlanta, Georgia. That stomach, you probably guys should probably hurt my stomach growl because I'm hungry. Um, who actually doesn't like to eat because I'm not a big eater. So that's part of my my struggle in this life is actually forcing myself to eat. That's 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 the ride I'm on right now. This is the ride that I'm on right now. This body, my I love my body. I think I got a great body. 
I've worked hard for it. That's just for this life though. It's going to get old. It's getting older every day. Eventually one day, this body that has done so much for me and has survived so much will eventually retire. And my soul is fine with that. What's the next life going to be like? What's that body going to be like? What's that experience going to be like? So that would be my suggestion. Anytime you find yourself, so basically if you are identifying your sense of self with the truth or community or an official narrative from the truth or community, <clears throat> if that's what you're doing, then of course you're going to get triggered when someone, tri when someone questions that. Because sub subconsciously what's happening is you feel like you're being, your sense of self is being questioned. No, it's not. It's just an opinion that's being questioned. And opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. And they all stink, right? And opinions change. Opinions evolve and change. But subconsciously, if you put your sense of self, your value, into a label, into an opinion, into a narrative, then when that is challenged, you feel like you are being challenged. But if you have a sense of self, if you have a sense of your soul, if you have something that you can rest into, then it's not a problem to be challenged. Because that soul is what's the truth, not the physical experience. Physical experience is just a lesson. It's just part of the ride. And when you have a sense of self too, you don't need to be, you don't need to engage in narcissistic activity, right? Like sending light to people without their consent or believing that love is, doesn't have boundaries. Again, love, of course, love, love is not the highest level of vibration. You guys, that's another misconception too. Love is not the highest level of vibration. Wisdom comes after love. Wisdom is higher than love. Fourth density is love. Fifth density is wisdom. Wisdom is higher than love. Because love can be manipulated. Wisdom can. So do you have the wisdom to understand that love really is all about boundaries? And if you have a sense of self, a sense of self-love, you will also then genuine self-love. You will then also then recognize that within other people too. And you will not cross their boundaries. You will be respectful of their experience. We say things, we have a couple sayings in the yoga world. One is don't interrupt somebody's karma. All karma is is work. It's just friction. Don't interrupt that. That karma that your friend, your family, your spouse, the stranger on the street, everybody's got karma. We all do. That's why we're here on third density. That karma, that's their golden lottery ticket. That's their chance to ascend. And if you take that away from them, you just took away their chance to ascend. Don't do that. We also have another saying my teacher used to say all the time. One time telling, two time telling. My stomach's growling. Hold on. One time telling, two time telling, three time God telling. Share your opinions with people. Put them back off. Let them live their life. Anyway, I hope that that makes sense. I thank you to all the people who understand what I'm saying. And thank you to everybody who's really working on yourself. I think sometimes, too, we get this grandiose idea that we're here to fight some macro battle that's happening on planet Earth. But it's not really about the macro. It's more about the micro the micro battle. And if every person dealt with themselves in their own micro battles, then the macro would take care of itself. I can also talk more about the law of one if you want to. Catherine and I spoke about that a lot, about um, their density that, you know, people didn't like to hear this. But just because you don't like to hear something doesn't mean it's not true. If you're triggered by it, again, that means that you need to look at it. The bad guys have every right to be here just as we do, because this is the planet of polarity. That's the point of third density. Fourth density, we split. Fourth, fourth density negative goes to one planet. Fourth density positive goes to another planet. But here on third density, this is both of our turfs. And if you know that, if you've studied this and you've studied these spiritual laws, then that will help you protect yourself. So many truthers out there are talking about how all these bad guys have capitulated and there's no one left. That's bullshit. If that happened, 
then we wouldn't be in third density anymore. And we are in third density because look around you, we're still in friction. So the bad guys are very much here and they will be here until the very end because they have as much a right to be here as we do because this is their density. This is the choice. It's up to us to make a choice whether we're going to go positive or negative. So anyway, I can do a further discussion on that if you guys want. At the end of the day, though, I would really suggest that you do your own research by getting the law of one and reading it. There are four or five books in the series getting all of Laura Knight's books. You can even get most of these books for free. Like there's PDFs of these books, you know, have, you know, don't rely on me to tell you about it. Go read it for yourself. Have that experience for yourself. Gain that knowledge for yourself. I totally think you can. If I've done it. You can do it. Gain that wisdom, find your autonomy, find your sense of self. And if you're worried about whether you're going to go fourth density positive or fourth density negative, you know, my boyfriend says it really great. He says, when the controllers of the world go low and do what they're, because they're going to do stuff, guys. That's part of their path of service to self. They're going to continue doing these audacious things, right? When they do something really bad, you do something really good. If you live in a neighborhood, it doesn't have to be big gestures. If you live in a neighborhood, is there an elderly neighbor in your neighborhood that you can just go knock on their door and ask them if you can help them like cut their grass or something? Don't just do it for them because then they, they might enjoy cutting their grass. You know, that's taking away their, their autonomy, but go knock on their door and be like, Hey, can I, can I help you cut your grass? Can I do that for you? No charge. Just, can I make you some dinner? Would you like to come up? If there's someone in your apartment building that you suspect is maybe lonely, maybe go knock on the door and be like, hey, would you want to come grab a glass of wine at my house and just get to know each other? You're my neighbor. I've seen you around. Or something small. If you're in the grocery store and someone looks sad, maybe just smile at them. Just give them a smile. I'll tell you guys a story and I'm not saying this to like toot my own horn or anything because I really didn't expect this. I go to this, there's a lot of grocery stores obviously in Atlanta that I can choose from. And there's one particular grocery store, Kroger, near where in Ansley Park, near where I, I live, that I prefer going to because, because there's this older black woman that works in the front. She works at the self-checkout. Her name is Barbara. And um, I just love her. Like I've lived here for years and I've seen her for years. And I, I choose to go to that grocery store a lot because she's there. Because every time I go there, regardless of who it is, she's so delightful. And she's like, hey, how are you doing, hon? She's just, and she does this to everyone. She's so kind and so personable to everyone. And the other day I was there, and all these years, I've never really had a full-on conversation with her. I've always just said, hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Have a wonderful day, whatever. But the other day... I was doing the self checkout and one of the items was not scanning. And so I had to call her over and she did it. And we started chit chatting and she was like, girl, she goes, I see you in her all the time, girl. And you're always, I just, we just started chit chatting. I said, you know, Barbara, I'm going to tell you something. I said, I come to this grocery store because you're here. And she was like, really? And I said, yeah, there's a Publix right next door. Like I, they have this, I, I come here because you're here. And I was like, and Barbara, you always make me feel so much better about my day. And you, I know you're doing that to other people too. And she gave me a big hug. And then I left and I came back like a week later. And I saw Barbara again. And Barbara came and put her hand on, on my back. It's going to be emotional. She said, after I talked to you last time, I sat in my car and I just got so emotional that you had said that. That just meant the world to me. And I said to her, I was like, well, it means the world to me that you actually are kind to people. I got emotional because she's so kind. And I was like, if I can give you that kindness in return, I was like, it's true, Barbara. I was like, ask, you know, you go to this Kroger and all the aisles where you can have someone scan and pack for you, they're never, there's never anybody there. Instead, people are in lines at this particular self-checkout. There's a self-checkout on the other side as well, but that self-check's never busy either. It's always this particular self-checkout that people go back in lines. And it's, I guarantee you, it's because of Barbara. It's because of Barbara. Because she's so kind to every person that goes through that store. Every person she, she treats with the same respect. Every single 
person. And I guarantee you, that's why her self-checkout is always packed. Because of her. That's how you become service to others. Be like Barbara. I don't know. She wears a mask all the time. I don't know what her political beliefs are. I have no idea. Doesn't matter. What matters is her humanity. What matters is her kindness. What matters is her genuine interest in the people that come through that grocery store. It's not her grocery store. It's a chain. She's probably getting paid by the hour. But she's genuinely interested in loving towards every human being that walks through that store. So regardless of what her religious beliefs are, her political beliefs are, it doesn't matter. What matters is her choices to be a kind human, to be good to others, to treat others with the respect that they deserve. That is what matters. Be a good human. Be a good human. You can disagree with somebody without name calling them. And I, I'm very grateful to the people in that comment section who had a different opinion, but were super respectful. Like that's totally awesome. That's great. Different opinions is how we learn from each other, right? Cassiopeians say that a lot. I mean, my boyfriend was bringing that up. Like Cassiopeians in the channeling, they'll give you information, but they only give you so much because they want you to figure it out. They want you to network with each other. They want you to work together to figure out what the answer is. But you can tell somebody that you don't agree with them and still be kind and still respect them and still be a loving person. You can tell somebody you don't agree with them without de de degrading their integrity, without making them, without telling them something's wrong with them because they have a different opinion. Nothing is wrong with somebody because they have a different opinion than you. And if that is how you perceive that person, if you perceive that something is wrong with them because they have a different opinion than you, darling, that's projection. That's you having something wrong with you. And a mature spiritual person knows that and doesn't act out. So anyway, <sighs> We will be doing a follow-up video on this and discussing this. Um, I just really encourage you guys to do your own research. Read the Law of One. Read the Emerald Tablets. The Emerald Tablets also speak about this too. The Emerald Tablets mirror the Law of One. Read the Yoga Sutras. Who, what's your soul? Who are you without all your labels? Start there. And remember, the darkness is always trying to manipulate you. So the only way to avoid being manipulated is to study, is to research, is to read these books, is to understand spiritual laws for yourself. All right, you guys, any questions you have, please feel free to ask them in the comment section below. And again, I thank you guys, all of you guys. I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir, like most of you guys are exactly like I am. And that's why I love all you guys so much. You're fed up with the, the bullying and the mean girls and the Orwellian tyrannical stuff coming from the quote unquote true the world. Um, honestly, it's getting censorship is getting worse in the truth of the world than it is even in the normie world. The normies are turning out to be the more sane people at this point than wokeism is more, um, cancel culture is more prevalent in the truth of the world than it is in the normie world. So, you know, the, the pendulum is swinging. <laughs> um, so, um, and I thank you guys, those of you who are understand that and are speaking out as well. There's a, there's a quote, uh, evil only exists when a good man or a good woman do nothing. And so by speaking up, pointing this out, we're doing something because there's a lot of evil. There's a lot of darkness in the truth of the world. So um, we need to point that out. We need to point it out. So, all right, you guys, I'll talk to you soon.